Well, we come now to uh, God's Word, and uh, tonight we're going to be ending our mini-series looking at the book of Joshua. So turn to me, please, if you will, to Joshua chapter 14, and we're going to be looking specifically tonight at verses 6 through to 15. And after I've read these verses, then we'll pray. Now the people of Judah approached Joshua at Gilgal, and Caleb, son of Jephunneh, the Kenazite said to him, You know what the Lord said to Moses, the man of God at Kadesh Barnea, about you and me? I was forty years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to explore the land. And I brought him back a report according to my convictions. But my fellow Israelites who went up with me made the hearts of the people melt in fear. I, however, followed the Lord my God wholeheartedly. So on that day Moses swore to me, the land on which your feet have walked will be your inheritance and that of your children forever, because you followed the Lord, my God, wholeheartedly. Now then, just as the Lord promised, he has kept me alive for 45 years since the time he said this to Moses. While Israel moved about in the wilderness, so here am I today, 85 years old. And I'm still as strong as the day Moses sent me out. I'm just as vigorous to go out to battle now as I was then. Now give me this hill country that the Lord promised me that day. You yourself heard then that the Anakites were there and that their cities were large and they were fortified. But the Lord helping me, I will drive them out just as he said. Then Joshua blessed Caleb, son of Jephunneh, and gave him Hebron as his inheritance. So Hebron has belonged to Caleb, son of Jephunneh, the Kenazite, ever since, because he followed the Lord, the God of Israel, wholeheartedly. Hebron used to be called Kiriath Arba, after Arba, who was the greatest man among the Anakites. And then the land had rest from war. Father, we just need your help tonight as we come to look at your word and uh, we pray, Lord God, as we look at it together, that you'll truly help us. Amen. Well, during the lockdown, as a a family, uh, we and another family who we've been friends with for many, many years, our children, friends as well, and now, of course, they're married, they've got their own homes, and we get together once a fortnight via Zoom and we take part in a quiz. And each family takes it in turns beforehand to compile a set of questions. It's all a bit of fun and it's a good time to stick together as well. Well, this might well be a question that features in one of our quizzes in the future. What do each of the following have in common? Alfred Lord Tennyson, Michelangelo, Justice Oliver Wendell Holmes, the pianist Arthur Rubenstein, Albert Schweitzer and Sir Winston Churchill. You see, our quizzes are never that easy. Well, before I give you the answer, the clue is probably in today's reading from Joshua, verse four, uh, chapter 14, rather, that I've called following the Lord wholeheartedly. Because you see, each of the aforementioned arguably achieved their best work later in life in their 80s, some into their 90s, proving once again that we shouldn't look on age as a barrier to wholeheartedly achieving great things. Think about it, Churchill, well we know he's a great wartime leader, but he was 82 when he sat down and wrote his four volume work, A History of the English Speaking People. Albert Schweitzer, he was 89 and he was still heading up his hospital in Africa. And although he was the same age, 89, and he was totally blind, Rubenstein, he brought the house down at Carnegie Hall, playing an entire concert purely from memory. And then Justice Wendell Holmes, not a household name, I'm sure, but he set down some of the most read and adopted legal opinions when he was 90. Michelangelo arguably completed his greatest works of art, when he was in his late 80s and likewise Tennyson he wrote his poem about life and death crossing the bar when he was 83 
Well, you know, I'm sure a day will come when most of those men will be forgotten. But the name of Caleb, son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, will continue to be spoken of. He will continue to inspire and he will continue to challenge us in our own walk with the Lord. Why? Because he's recorded here in the scriptures. Well, both Joshua and Caleb, you might recall, were two of the 12 spies that Moses sent into the promised land. And whilst the other 10 brought back a bad report and stirred up the people, both Joshua and Caleb, well, they brought back a good report. Numbers 13, verse 30. Then Caleb silenced the people before Moses and said, we should go up and we should take possession of the land for we can certainly do it. And then Numbers 14. The people wanted to choose a new leader and they wanted to return to Egypt. And this brought Caleb to say, don't rebel against the Lord and don't be afraid of the people of the land because we will swallow them up. Their protection is gone. But the Lord is with us. Do not be afraid. Well, of course, we know the outcome, don't we? A journey, we're told in Deuteronomy, that should have only taken about 11 days, lasted 40 years leaving only Joshua and Caleb of those who'd come up from Egypt to see and to enter the promised land. Because you see, Israel had failed. It had failed to trust God. It had failed to obey him. And a whole generation of those who'd come up out of Egypt died out in the desert. Well, just have a look with me at those opening three verses, verses six to nine. Now the people of Judah approached Joshua at Gilgal. And Caleb, son of Jephunneh the Canaanite, said to him, You know what the Lord said to Moses, the man of God at Kadesh Barnea, about you and me? I was 40 years, years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to explore the land. And I brought him back a report according to my convictions. But my fellow Israelites who went up with me made the hearts of the people melt in fear. I, however, followed the Lord my God wholeheartedly. So on that day Moses swore to me, the land on which your feet have walked will be your inheritance and that of your children forever, because you have followed the Lord my God wholeheartedly. Well, what we have here, of course, is Caleb's request. Well, just to backtrack a little, I wonder how many missed opportunities and blessings have actually passed us by because we've allowed fear to get in the way of us putting our trust and our faith in God and wholeheartedly obeying God as Caleb did. You know, many believers today, and it's really sad that they would say this, they might look at a modern day Caleb's wholeheartedness for God and they might see it as fanaticism. Oh, that's a bit over the top. Oh, they're a bit over the top for the Lord, aren't they? But you know, in light of what God's done for us, shouldn't our response to him be one of wholehearted thankfulness? Shouldn't it be one of wholehearted love and devotion? having a wholehearted desire to serve and please God today. We know what impact on the nation those 10 spies who brought a bad report back to Moses brought about. It sowed the seeds of fear. It sowed the seeds of doubt in the minds of God's people. It led them to fail to trust and obey God, to put their faith in him. The very God who would miraculously rescued them from Egypt, who brought them through the Red Sea on dry land, who'd gone before them and gone behind them to protect them. And guess what? God is doing the same for us today. And for our part, well, we mustn't resist him carrying out his will in our lives or allow fear of the unknown to prevent us from wholeheartedly putting our faith and trust in him and in his promises to us through his word, the Bible. You know, although God continued to provide for his people during those 40 years, the blessings that could have been theirs, if only they'd wholeheartedly put their trust in him, as Caleb did, well, we know was denied them. Well, how tragic it would be if through our failure to wholeheartedly trust God, that our resistance to his will being done in our lives, that we found ourselves being denied the many blessings our loving Father wants to pour out on us each and every day. So, you know, the question we need to ask ourselves today is this. Are we as wholehearted in our love and commitment to God as Caleb was? Are we ready to claim the promises of God even in later years? Well, look with me now at verses 10 down to 12. 
Now then, said Caleb, just as the Lord promised, he has kept me alive for 45 years since the time he said this to Moses, while Israel moved about in the wilderness. So here I am today, 85 years old. I'm still as strong today as the day Moses sent me out. I'm just as vigorous to go out to battle now as I was then. Now give me this hill country that the Lord promised me that day. You yourselves heard then that the Anakites were there and their cities were large and fortified. But the Lord helping me, I'll drive them out, just as he said. Well, I wonder if we're as vigorous in the battle as Caleb was. Because you see, no matter what age we are, as believers, each of us are called to serve in the Lord's army. And we know, don't we, as Paul reminds us in Ephesians 6, that our battles, <coughs> they're not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers and the authorities of this dark world, against all the spiritual forces of evil. See, the land Caleb had asked mercy for, it wasn't some strip of land with a nice beach and a sea view, somewhere where Caleb could retire to, put his feet up and spend his day dozing in a deck chair. What Caleb requested wasn't like that at all. It was a land still to be subdued, still to be cleared of its ungodly behaviour, its idolatry, its immorality. Verse 12, it was a land where the Anakites lived, in cities that were large and fortified. But what does Caleb say here? But the Lord helping me, I'll drive them out, just as he said. Well, these aren't the words of an enthusiastic old soldier in the Corporal Jones mould. His bayonet out, ready, drawn to. Well, you know the rest of it, of course. Caleb's confidence was that he could drive out the Anakites, despite their reputation as being imposing and fearsome. His, his confidence wasn't in his own abilities, even though he says at 85 he's just as vigorous for the battle as he was in his 40s. Caleb's confidence came from his wholehearted trust in God and what God had said at the end of verse 12, just as he said. You see that there? I will drive them out, the Lord helping me, just as he said. I'm sure that Caleb wasn't naive. He knew the battle wouldn't be easy. Battles, whatever they are and with whoever, never are. But Caleb knew that he could go forward with absolute assurance because what he was doing was absolutely in line with God's will for him. After all, God had confirmed it to him, just as he said, we see at the end of that verse. Well, I believe Caleb's wholehearted assurance that what he was doing was in line with God's will. And it's something that every one of us as God's people need to prayerfully consider ourselves today. Because you see, if our lives are being lived in line with God's will for us, then we can have that same assurance that Caleb had, that when we face the battles that we face as believers, that we can meet them with that same assurance, that with the Lord's help, we can overcome our enemies. This was a church motto just a few years ago, Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. And even at 85, this is precisely what Caleb was doing. He was putting his wholehearted trust in the Lord, that the Lord was going before him in the battle. You know, in a summary of Israel's conquests of Canaan, you go back to Joshua 11, and it tells us that Joshua destroyed the Anakites from the hill country of Hebron. And no doubt Caleb was there, no doubt he was in the thick of that battle. And then following that, we're told the land had rest from war. Well, as I said earlier, you know, our battles are not against flesh and blood. Although, of course, sin and evil can manifest itself in nation going to war with other nations and people being at loggerheads with, people, with one another. As we saw last century, didn't we, with those two awful wars that claim the lives of so many but our battles are the battles that range in here, in our hearts, daily. The battle with sin, the battle with evil. And though we have the assurance that Jesus has won the victory over Satan, dealing 
him a death blow on the cross. Nevertheless, until the Lord Jesus comes again in glory, as he said he will, then our battle with sin, the flesh and the devil is going to continue. So like Caleb, we need to be wholeheartedly committed to God, wholeheartedly putting our trust in the promise of his word, that God is the one who goes before us in the battle, the battle against our enemies, and it's God who will overcome them. For our part, we must be vigorously praying that our lives are being lived in absolute line with God's will for us, that we're not allowing fear or disobedience to get in God's way of him bringing about his will in us, or for that matter, are we in any way to resist him from his will being done in our lives? My prayer for us as a church that mainly attracts more mature believers didn't say aged, I said mature, is that we'll look on Caleb's wholehearted trust in the Lord, his vigour for the battle, and we'll have that same desire, that same zeal and passion to serve God ourselves today. We saw earlier with that list of those who've achieved their best, and we saw that their best was accomplished later in life. And that can be the same for us today, because age is no barrier to God. So are we still serving God with the same vigour we had in our younger days? Or is God yet to see a greater and more wholehearted trust and commitment in him in our later years? Well, finally, just look with me at those last couple of verses, verses 13 down to 15. Then Joshua blessed Caleb, son of Jephunneh, and gave him Hebron as his inheritance. So Hebron has belonged to Caleb, son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, ever since, because he followed the Lord, the God of Israel, wholeheartedly. Hebron used to be called Kiriath Arba, after Arba, who was the greatest man among the Anakites. Then the land had rest from war. So what we see in these last couple of verses is Caleb's wholehearted commitment to God being rewarded. Just as Moses had promised, Joseph, uh, Joshua rather now gave Caleb the inheritance that was promised to him, that hill country of Hebron. Well, as we've seen with Caleb, we're never too old to serve God ourselves in whatever way he chooses for us to serve him. And we're never too old for him to transform us into a greater likeness of his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, so that we can be the people that he wants us to be. A people who, through the Lord Jesus, God has won the victory over sin and death. And in doing so, given us his promise of a future inheritance in a new land. A place where one day we'll find rest ourselves from the daily battles that rage on in our hearts. Because in that new place, sin and evil will no longer exist. Neither will sickness, neither will death. Neither will there be pandemics that have claimed the lives of so many. And neither will there be any need to mourn the dead. Because as the scriptures reveal, these are the things we associate with this world. And there'll be no more. And guess what? Neither will these bodies that wear out through old age. And you know, these things can be ours. When we wholeheartedly come to the cross of the Lord Jesus and we repent of all our sins. When we wholeheartedly turn our lives over to him. And we submit to God's sovereign authority, as Caleb clearly had. When we stop resisting God, as Israel was guilty of in the wilderness, instead allowing God to bring about his good and pleasing willingness and through us. And you know, like Caleb, we can go forward in the battle against sin, the world and the devil, in the knowledge that God has gone before us. And the victory has been won and assured. Amen. Father, tonight we want to thank you indeed for your word to us. And we pray now, Lord God, that you'll help us as we go through the rest of this day, Lord, to have that wholehearted commitment and love for you. And Lord, help us to be like Caleb to have that enthusiasm, Lord, to have that great love that he certainly had for you. 
Lord, help us in this, we pray. Amen. Well, we're going to end our service tonight with a lovely hymn. This is King of Kings, Majesty, God of Heaven, living in me. Gentle Saviour, closest friend, strong deliverer, beginning and end. And what's our response? Well, all that's within us should fall at your throne. Let's sing these words together, shall we? <laughs>